Today I'm going to show you how to create your own photography portfolio website. For this tutorial, I'm going to use a completely blank installation of WordPress and a premium theme called Aventine Portfolio. You can buy the theme on ThemeForest and I've put a link to it in the description below. This tutorial consists of four parts. First, we are going to go over the install and the setup of the theme. We are going to set up the menu and we are going to set up our logo. Then we are going to create three WordPress posts, a regular post, a post with side-by-side -side images, and we are also going to create a post with a masonry gallery in it. Then we are going to create three pages, about me, contact me and services, and finally set up our portfolio, create our portfolio albums, set the portfolio as the home page, and set up the portfolio header background image and the footer call to action. You can jump to any of these parts directly by scrolling down to the description below and using the interactive table of contents. So without any further delay, let's begin setting up the portfolio. Let's start from the beginning and install the theme. Go to Appearance, Themes, add a new theme, and we are going to upload the theme we downloaded from ThemeForest. Drag Aventine Portfolio zip file in, and click Install Now. Now I can click Activate, and now we are ready to go. Now, right out of the box, the theme is going to recommend that you install a bunch of plugins. So that's what I'm going to do, begin installing the plugins. I'm just going to install all of them. So bulk actions, install. It might take a while for all of the plugins to install, so I'm just going to speed this up for this tutorial. Now that we have all of the plugins installed, we are ready to start setting up our site. So first, let's check out how the theme looks with no content and no setup at all. Let's go to visit site. And yeah, the theme is pretty blank. So the first thing we want to do is we want to set up our menu. You can do that by either clicking on this appearance menu or we can go to appearance menus in our dashboard. I'm going to give this menu a name call it navigation. And I'm going to leave these two links in for now. So I'm going to create a menu. Now that I have created a menu, I have to assign a location where to display that menu. In Aventine Portfolio, there is only one menu location that's called primary menu. So I'm going to check this checkbox and I'm also going to check this auto add pages because later when we add pages, I want them to automatically appear in the menu. So I'm checking both checkboxes and click save the menu. Now let's go back to the home page one more time. Have a look and there we go, we have a menu. One more thing I would like to do is I would like to have a logo over here. So I'm going to go to theme options. And right here you can upload your site logo. I can also upload an image for high resolution screens. But you have to make sure that the image is exactly twice as large as your original logo. I have exactly that, so I can click Upload, drag in the second image, click Select, and Save Changes. Now let's see how the site looks. Okay, so this looks good. By the way, if you don't have a logo, you can use one of the many logos that we have designed for free. You can check out the link to our logo packs below in the description. Okay, so now we're ready to start setting up some WordPress posts. 
I'm going to close this down and go to posts all posts. First thing I want to do is delete the hello world post and let's create some of our own. I'm just going to give this a title, simple sample content and paste in some sample text. Click publish. Okay, so that's blog post number one. Let's create another one. I'm going to call this side by side and add in some text, but I also want to add in some pictures. So let's do that here. Click on add media and drag in a few pictures. And I'm going to upload two more. But for now, I just want to insert this one image in this post. But before you do, make sure the image is the correct size. You can scroll down right here and it says attachment display settings. You want to set the size to a size that you want. In my case, I want the full size 1024 by 576. Select the full size. Align the image to the center and insert into post. Now, over here, I want to add in two portrait images side by side. And there's a way you can do that in Aventine Portfolio. So you can click on Add Media. But this time, instead of simply inserting media, we're going to click on Create Gallery. Now I can select these two images and click on create a new gallery. I don't want the images to link to anywhere, so I'm going to click on link to none. I want to have two columns out of these two images, so they're going to be side by side and I want them to be full size. So click on full size, insert gallery, and there we go, we have side-by-side -side images. That's it, click Publish. Let's have a look at our blog post. Okay, so far so good. Let's create one more blog post. And in this post, I want a masonry gallery. So I'm going to call this a masonry gallery, paste in some of that sample content. And I want my masonry gallery to be somewhere in the middle right here. Same as before, click on add media, go to create gallery and drag in a bunch of pictures. Wait for them to upload Click create a new gallery. Now in the gallery, I'm going to link to the media file this time, and I want the size to be large. And I think three columns is perfect for a masonry layout. So click on insert gallery. Now this might look weird in your post editor, but as soon as you click publish, and open up the post in your site, you're going to see a masonry layout of your gallery. Okay, so now that we have created three posts, it's time we go and create a few WordPress pages. Now, pages are essentially the same as your posts, so all of the galleries are going to work exactly like in your posts but they don't show up in your blog and you use them for content like contact me, about me, my services, etc. And in fact, those are the three pages that we are going to create right now. Okay, so let's close down our blog and start working on our pages. Let's start with something simple. I'm going to create a simple about me page. Call it about me. Add in some sample text and on top of the about me page, I am going to add an about me image. Same as before, drag and drop, 
Click insert into page when the image is uploaded. And there we go. So that's a simple about me page. Next, let's create a contact me page. Call this contact me. And on top of the contact me page, I'm just going to paste in just a little bit of content. I'm going to center align the content. And now we're going to need the content to be split in two columns. And we're going to use WordPress shortcodes for that. To do that, I'm going to click on this select shortcode button right here. And I'm going to want two columns. So first, I'm going to use one half as my left column. And after the one half, I'm also going to use one half to the right. And you can see a visual representation of the columns right here. So one half last. And now between these short codes, right over here, we can paste in our content. I don't want these short codes to be center aligned. So I'm just going to cancel the center alignment for them. In the left half, I'm going to upload an image. So again, add media drag and drop an image. And I'm going to insert that into the page. Scroll way down. On the right side, I want to have my contact form. Now in order to have a contact form, first, I have to create that form. So I'm going to go to contact contact forms and open up that in a new tab. Now the contact form seven plugin automatically creates a sample contact form for you. So we can just use this one, I'm going to call this contact me. And this is where you can edit your contact form. And you can even add more fields to the contact form if you want to. In my case, I think your name, your email, subject and message is plenty. So I'm just going to leave it be and click Save. And right here, it says, Copy the shortcode and paste it into your post page or text widget content. So that's exactly what we're going to do. I'm going to select this text, hit Command C to copy, go back to my page, and inside this one half last, I'm going to paste in the contact form shortcode, like so. I'm also going to delete the excess space. Now it looks like gibberish right now. So I'm just going to publish this page and see how it looks on our site. Click on publish. Open the contact me page. And there we go. Contact me. A picture on the left side and our contact form on the right side. Okay, let's create one more page called services. I'm going to close these two tabs. And go to pages, add new to create a new page. I'm going to call this page services. To start off, I'm going to paste in some sample text. And now let's create services. To do that, I'm going to go to add post element. And these are called services block. So when I click on this, I have a few options here. So once again, I'm going to paste in some sample content. And I can add an image as well. Select the image, this block is going to be aligned left. And at the moment, I'm not going to have a button. So I'm just going to skip these two fields. Click insert element. And now here we have our first services block. You might see it a little differently if you have a larger screen. But because I'm recording on a small resolution, it automatically turns into the responsive mode. So hit return and create another service block. This time I'm going to align the image to the right, select an image, 
and paste in some more sample content. And let's create one more services block. Align image to the left, select the image, paste in some text. And this time I want a button that is going to link to my contact me page. I'm going to type contact me and paste in a link to the contact me page. Click on insert element. And now we can publish our services page. Open that in a new tab. Now it looks like this middle services block needs some improvement. So I'm going to go back to the page. Find this image right here. Click on it. Click on edit. And for this services block, I think I can make it link to my portfolio. We don't have a real link. So for now, I'm just going to add in a hash sign. Click on update. So I think that's going to improve my services layout. So go back to services, reload the page. That's better. Now you can tweak these as much as you like, but for this tutorial, it's time to move on. So I'm going to close the services page and start building our portfolio. Let's start by creating a few portfolio galleries. To do that, go to portfolio, new portfolio entry. Give this entry a title. I'm going to call this people. You can also add in a subtitle and content. I'm going to skip those for now. Add in images. Just as before, drag and drop the images you need. When the images have been uploaded, you can click on use these files. You also need to set a featured image. So click on set featured image. I'm going to use this one and hit publish. So that's all you need to do to create a portfolio entry. Now, because it's so simple to save some time in this tutorial, I'm just going to skip ahead and create a few more portfolio entries. Okay, so now I've created a few more portfolio entries. So let's have a look at my portfolio. Open up the site in a new tab. And right now, there's no link to my portfolio. And that's okay, I can just type in slash portfolio. And there we go. This is my portfolio. Now there's one more thing I want to do. I want to set my portfolio to be my home page. To do that, I need to create two pages. One page is going to be called portfolio. And all I need to do is add in the title and click publish. And the other one is going to be called blog. And click publish again. Now I can go to my settings, reading. And here I can control which page WordPress is going to display as the front page. So I want my front page to be a static page. The front page is going to be my portfolio. And the posts page is where I'm going to display my blog posts. So that's going to be my blog. Click Save Changes. And there's one more thing you need to do. You need to go to Portfolio, Portfolio Settings, and you need to tell the Portfolio plugin which page do you want the portfolio to appear in. In this case, it's the Portfolio page. So select that and click Save. Now I can go and open up my site. I have a portfolio in my homepage. 
And if I open up a gallery, I have a horizontal portfolio in here. Now I noticed that we have both portfolio and home active, and that's because the portfolio page right now is the home page. So we can edit that in the menu, go to appearance, menus, and I'm just going to remove the portfolio link. At this point, I don't want the top level pages to be added automatically to the menu, so I'm going to disable that. Click Save Menu, reload the page, and there we go. We're almost done. Now it's time to set up a background image for our portfolio header. To do that, once again, let's go to Theme Options, scroll down, and right here you can upload your portfolio header image. I suggest using an image without any people in it because it's automatically going to be cropped on different screen sizes. Just as before, drag and drop the image you want, select and click Save Changes. Now I can visit the site and there we go, a background image for my portfolio. So now you have a fully functional portfolio and a blog already set up. So there's only one more thing that I'm going to show you in this tutorial, and that is how to set up the call to action footer that we have in our demo right here. And it's actually quite easy. Go to your theme options again, and scroll down until you see footer call to action. You can turn that on and all you really need to do is upload a background image. I'm going to use the same image that I have in my portfolio header. You can edit all of these fields, just make sure if it says contact me that you actually link to a contact me form. So in my case, this would be contact me. Click on save changes, and that's all you need to do. I can go back to my site, scroll down, and there we go. A call to action to contact me if you want me to capture your story. That's it. Thank you for watching. I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial. If you need any help, you can contact us through our support forums. And you can find all the links in the description below. And that's it. See ya.